Good morning. Today is Saturday, and thank you for joining me uh, for our Easter devotion this morning. And I do pray uh, that these devotions this week have been a blessing to you as we've traveled up to tomorrow morning, Resurrection Sunday, and uh, looking forward to coming to you. Uh, then that one will be a little different. We're going to move it a little bit later, nine o'clock, and allow some more people to jump. Uh, on live with us and uh, looking forward to that here in just a little bit but if you have your bibles matthew chapter 27 uh, matthew 27 these particularly the end of the chapter uh, christ uh, has uh, went through the three different trials uh, he has been scourged beaten he's been taken to calvary he has been there on the cross um, we've looked at uh, just some some different things there uh, and he has given himself. He lays down his life. He commends his spirit. He gives up his spirit uh, to the Father, completes uh, that part of uh, the crucifixion. And then now, uh, what is going to take place? What is going to happen? And so we jump in and we look this morning at Matthew 27. And to look there with me at verse number 57, and then I will pray. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus's disciple. Let's pray together. Father, what a blessing it is to be here this morning. Thank you for the joy uh, that we have to look at your word uh, and the power of it. And we do pray this morning that once again, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, thank you for the events of this week and the opportunity to look a little closer God, I do pray that it has caused and will continue to cause a time of reflection about how special uh, your son's crucifixion was and how special and remarkable the resurrection was. And thank you that we can hang our Christian faith on that, that we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. God, meet with us, I pray. I pray to you use your Holy Spirit in our lives. In your son Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. will not be long this morning, but a couple things that I wanted to point out. Uh, to you in this particular passage. First of all, I want you to see Joseph the disciple. Joseph the disciple. We read there in verse number 57, when the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And uh, sometimes I think we believe that there was just a, a few people uh, there who were followers of Christ uh, of course, we, we know the 12 men and the 11 men now uh, in this story, uh, but there was more disciples or more followers of Jesus Christ outside of the apostles. And we're introduced to one, Joseph, a rich man of Arimathea. And uh, what a blessing. Uh, there was rich, there was poor, uh, there was Jews, there was Greeks, there was a, a group of different people, collective people uh, who came and who sat at the feet of Jesus and who listened to him and believed his teachings. And so Joseph uh, asked Pilate for the body of Christ and he's delivered, he's given to him. The second thing I want you to notice, it wasn't a normal burial. Uh, the burial had to uh, be sped up. Verse number 59, and when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Uh, usually for a burial, they would take time to anoint the body, to embalm uh, the body, to make it uh, prepared, uh, but they didn't have the time. And, and thus the ladies uh, would come on the first day of the week when they, when they could come uh, to bring spices there. The normal burying process did not take place. Uh, it wasn't normal burial. The third thing I want you to notice was the emphasis on the tomb. The emphasis on the tomb. Look there with me at verse number 60. And laid, it, uh, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone in the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher and laid it in his own new tomb. You know, everything was perfect for our Savior. He entered the world through a virgin birth, and he was given a new tomb where no body had ever lain. And, uh, and it goes to prove people could not say that, uh, oh, it was the wrong body that rose. It wasn't really Jesus's body uh, there that arose uh, from the game. That, that person who rose was not Christ. No, uh, he was the first 
a person to lie there. It was a new tomb. Uh, something else I want to point out in those verses that the Lord just, just brought to my mind there in verse number 61. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Um, here, here was Mary uh, and the other Mary, and they're both there. They know exactly where Christ is being laid. And as they finish, they're sitting there. Could you imagine just the feelings uh, that they were going through? Um, here was the person they'd followed. Uh, of course, uh, the one Mary uh, had demons cast out of her. These were people who were close to Christ. Um, and, and just the, the sheer emotion uh, of the moment, here's two ladies after the stone has been rolled uh, that's just sitting there pondering the situation. Um, so we have first the Joseph, a disciple. Second, it wasn't a normal burial. Third, uh, their emphasis on the tomb. And then lastly, and this one's going to take a little longer, uh, the sermon preached by the Pharisees. Now, you didn't think that the Pharisees preached a sermon about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you this morning, they did. And I want you to look at it here uh, with me. Now, before I look at it, though, I want to remind you that the disciples were not preaching a message uh, here in this passage. Uh, we know from other accounts that they were hiding in the upper room for fear of the Jews. They should have been waiting in anticipation. They should have remembered the three different occasions that Christ told them, I will arise. Three days later, I'm going to rise again. They did not remember that. They were fearful. They were unforsure. They did not know what was taking place. They were scared. They were hiding. But we have the Pharisees, and it's very interesting as we look at what the Pharisees were thinking and feeling during this time. Look there with me at verse number 62. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, came together unto Pilate, okay? Now there's a couple things uh, that they preached here in this sermon. Uh, first of all, they admitted that Christ had died. Now, this is a big deal because uh, there's what's called the swoon theory uh, that Jesus passed out on the cross uh, and that when they placed him in this tomb in the cold air, uh, he was revived. His body was brought back to life. So he did not die. Um, he just kind of regained his composure. Let me just say the Pharisees tell us that he was dead. Matter of fact, if there was anybody that wanted to make sure that Jesus was dead, tell me it's not the chief leaders. The Pharisees describes the one uh, who the ones who uh, were were crying crucify him in the first place. And we see there in verse number sixty three, saying, "Sir, we remember that the what the deceiver said while he was yet alive, meaning he was dead now." After three days, I will rise again. And so it really, it throws that swoon theory out of the window. Matter of fact, I came across the humorous letter uh, to the editor to a Christian magazine accurately evaluating this particular theory. And uh, once again, it's more of jest, but I want to read it to you. Dear Eutychus, one preacher said on Easter that Jesus just swooned on the cross and that the disciples nursed him back to health. What do you think, sincerely, the bewildered? Okay, and here's the response. Dear bewildered, beat your preacher with a cat of nine tails with 39 heavy strokes. Nail him to a cross, hang him there for six hours, run a spear through his heart, put him in an airless tomb for 72 plus hours, and see what happens. Sincerely, Eutychus. I love it. It cast that one completely out the window, but the Pharisees... Tell us that he was dead, okay? Number two, not only did they admit Christ had died, they remembered Christ's words. The disciples, I believe, forgot, but not the religious leaders, not the Pharisees. Verse number 63, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days, I will arise again. Ironically, the disciples of Jesus Christ did not remember what he said 
or the promise of his resurrection. But the religious leaders, the Pharisees, they did, and it made them nervous. That's the third, that's the third thing. Well, you know what? Let me mention in there, I, I don't have this written down, uh, but I was just thinking about it. Uh, two, two things. Um, first of all, isn't it neat that the Pharisees remembered what Christ said? Shouldn't we as believers remember God's words? Shouldn't we remember God's words? The second thing, they acted on God's word. And that's something great for us too. Do we act on what Christ said? Do we remember what Christ said? And do we act upon what Christ said? And that's what the Pharisees did. They remembered that he said uh, he was going to rise again. And so they acted upon that. Pilate, can we do something about it? And that's number three. They were nervous about Christ's power. They admitted he was dead. They remembered his words. And they were nervous of Christ's power. Verse number 64. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He has risen from the dead, so the last heir shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. The disciples steal the body, really. You can't pretend a dead body is alive. Uh, They could say, well, where is he at? If he really arose, present him self to us. Where, where is he? And you can't make a dead body seem alive to over 500 uh, eyewitness accounts of Christ's resurrection. The Pharisees believed that he had the power to rise again. And believing that, they made sure that the stone uh, was sealed and they made sure to set up a watch uh, to confirm that nothing happened. Now, while the disciples were afraid of the Pharisees, the Pharisees were afraid of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. By the way, what a wonderful sermon. What a wonderful sermon. Now, it's time to wait. Jesus is in the tomb. Spoiler alert, something happens. I cannot wait to come back to our devotion tomorrow morning and talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a quick devotion this morning, but I do believe if we'll stop and think about some of the things that we talked about uh, and we read over this passage, uh, there's a lot for us to meditate and think on uh, here this morning. I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Sure appreciate you tuning in and uh, let's ask God's blessings. Father, thank you once again for your your word, your goodness to us, the opportunity to look here uh, this morning. And I do pray that you'd use these thoughts. Help us to meditate on how uh, the two Marys would have felt. Uh, Help us to meditate on Joseph. Uh, Help us to meditate this morning and throughout the day on the tomb. And then help us to meditate on this most unusual message that the Pharisees preach. They believed in Jesus' power. They, it made them nervous. And so they remembered and they acted on it. And God, I pray that as we look at your words, that we'd remember your words and that we'd act on it and we'd see the blessing that come from it. We sure do love you and we sure look forward to studying your son's resurrection tomorrow. Your son Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Thanks for taking time to tune in this morning. God bless.